This is how the expansion card sausage gets made. Before we talk about how the SD expansion card gets made, we need to talk about how we came up with this. This is a framework expansion card. It's a 38 by seven by 30 millimeter, eight gram box designed to give framework laptop users flexibility and control over what ports they have on their laptop. The sleek minimalist chassis is made of 50% post-consumer recycled aluminum and 30% post-consumer recycled plastic. But there's more to the design than what's shared on a spec sheet. All of the expansion cards connect via USB-C so you can take advantage of the universality of a universal serial bus. It's held in place with a rail and latch system that keeps the card firmly in the laptop chassis. On the Framework Laptop 13, you press this button and pull the card from the chassis. And on the Framework Laptop 16, you toggle a switch. This little plastic ledge gives you a place to hold while pulling the expansion card out. It's held together with two T5 screws and it's designed to be accessible for upgrades and circuit level repairs. The expansion card system is really an obvious solution to an obvious problem. When we first started researching laptops competitively when we were starting the Framework Laptop, it became clear that even on the best reviewed systems, reviewers consistently called out either a lack of ports or missing ports being one of the key negatives. And so we looked at that and thought, well, we're building something that's repairable and upgradable and to some extent modular. Why don't we actually modularize the ports too? The expansion card system might be an obvious solution to an obvious problem, but implementing said solution is a little less obvious. Designing and manufacturing a regulation laptop actually has a pretty standardized playbook. The goal is to create one complete self-contained product. You drill a few holes on the side of the laptop to accommodate the ports, which are soldered directly onto the mainboard. While the internal layout does have some technical constraints, the internal components don't have to really be laid out in a way that's simple or accessible. They just need to fit within the bounds of the laptop. This limited design with finite I.O. options sacrifices consumer choice for the operational simplicity of a one-size-fits-all solution. But designing for modularity and repairability is different. The goalpost shifts from creating one complete self-contained product to multiple complete products that work without each other, but whose whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Instead of soldering ports onto the mainboard and adding holes to the side of the chassis, the ports now live in their own little self-contained pods that dock into the negative space built into the underside of the laptop. Each I.O. type is now its own unique, discrete product that needs to be designed and manufactured with cross-compatibility and legacy support in mind. This modular design with potentially infinite I.O. options allows for more consumer agency at the expense of design and engineering complexity. All of the design choices, whether you're designing one product or M plus one products, have to balance user experience with design criteria, design tolerance, and manufacturability. The early designs of the expansion card system didn't actually start as expansion cards. In fact, they weren't even USB-C. It started out as something with a similar user experience to our main boards. Turn off your laptop, open up the chassis, and take a screwdriver to it. While that early design and architecture, which would hinge on M.2 interfaces, had its benefits, it had its shortcomings too. As we started centering on USB-C and using the various USB-C alt modes, we found that we could map in each of the types of ports and peripherals that we wanted if we sized it carefully. Once we started to design the framework laptop, so we, we had this idea to design this expansion card system. And so the first question we encountered was that, so how big it should be, right? To determine the dimensions of the expansion cards, they measured the most commonly used connectors on the market including USB-A, USB-C, audio jack, display port, HDMI, micro SD, and full-size SD. The expansion card's width and thickness was set to accommodate the largest possible port. The expansion card's position, count, and dimensions then became a consideration when designing the Framework Laptop system. The Framework Laptop 13's aesthetic choices also set the precedent for the expansion cards. Raw aluminum doesn't have pigments to flake and doesn't show scratch marks as dramatically as dyed or coated aluminum does. By using raw aluminum for both the expansion card and the laptop chassis, it also unifies the design language and shows that they belong together in a system. So with the initial design exploration complete, they sent off the designs to Compile to manufacture the first proof of concept mockups of the expansion card, which opened the door to a whole new wave of design challenges. The early prototypes of the expansion cards explored a few different options to keep the expansion cards within their base. 
a spring button system, a latch button system, and a switch. The spring button system didn't provide users with enough control over the expansion cards. While it made it really easy to remove the expansion cards, it also made it a little too easy for the expansion cards to accidentally pop out. The Framework Laptop 13 also didn't have enough space to accommodate the switch design, so it was integrated into the Laptop 16 instead. The latch button system was the best of both worlds. It gives users enough control over the expansion cards and keeps them firmly in place, but makes it easy enough to remove without the risk of any flying projectiles. The early expansion card design also featured an all-aluminum chassis, which made it hard to get a good grip on when removing the expansion cards. The rails also moved from the top to the middle of the expansion card. This small tweak in design mitigates connector damage if the user installs the expansion card upside down. The dimensions of the expansion cards in the bays were also adjusted by a few millimeters to help the product maintain structural integrity. But that came at a cost. The compact design of the expansion cards suddenly became a little too compact. When you look at the top cover, some of them are made out of injection molded plastic and others are made out of aluminum. Some ports require more complex circuitry than others, which means they need extra space. So the ports that need more space for their PCBs have metal plates. Once the team started exploring more detailed designs of each expansion card, it turned out that the expansion card was literally a millimeter too small to accommodate a full-size SD card reader. This discovery led to two options. Redesign the entire laptop, or move forward with the current design, and solve the SD card problem later. But what does that mean for the SD expansion card? This is what the ID looks like right now. We're rolling with the existing design language and using a metal top cover to make extra space for internal components. The early design decisions of the expansion card system made it easy to translate the cards for new IOs we want to support. But the engineering that goes inside the expansion cards and the custom card receptacle, well, that's a different story. 